Okay, so let's get started with the oil that's going to be basing the red snapper and the asparagus. First things first, I'm cutting the lemon down to slices and I'm also going to zest this lemon and put it in the light olive oil. Here I have minced garlic, butter, and that zest lemon with some light olive oil. And I'm going to add it to the pot so I can infuse all of those delicious flavors together. This doesn't take long at all, you guys, so don't walk away from this at all. It only takes roughly about three to five minutes. So I'm just gonna add all of my ingredients into the pot and let this heat up. Once it does start heating up, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some thyme to this as well too, to give it more of a Caribbean kind of filling. And I'm gonna give it a quick stir and then that's it you guys. Go ahead and remove that off of the stove. But right here I have my asparagus, fresh asparagus right here. I'm going to be using that oil that we created earlier and just giving this a quick brush because this is also going to go on the grill. I know, grilled asparagus, huh? Sound good, don't it? It sure does, but you gotta keep watching to see what else I do. So make sure when you are using the brush, completely brush the asparagus and then lightly season it with a little bit of Himalayan sea salt. And that's it. That's all you have to do, nothing else. So now that I'm all finished, I'm gonna give this a quick shake so all of that sea salt gets all over the asparagus, and now let's work on this fish. So right here I have this red snapper. I went ahead and washed it. Now I'm going to be cutting it and putting inserts into the fish. The reasons why I'm doing this is because I want the flavors to go through and out this fish. So I'm making inserts on one side and also on the other. And there's a reason why I'm doing this. So continue to watch. So as I'm done making my inserts, I'm just gonna go ahead and turn my fish over. And now it's time to season. So now I'm bringing back in that oil that we created earlier. And the oil is really to help you when you do grill, that it doesn't stick on the grill. So I'm gonna go in between those inserts putting that lovely delicious garlic in between. So therefore the garlic is flavorful inside this red snapper. And then I'm going to lightly brush it as well too, because I want my seasoning to stick on this red snapper. Make sure when you're brushing on this light oil, that you're getting every single crease of this red snapper. So that's including inside as well too, because that's going to infuse all of those seasonings with inside the fish. And when we grill this, it's gonna bring it out, trust me. But you gotta keep watching to see what else I do. So now I'm gonna add Mediterranean Magic on this. This is one of those seasonings I picked up and I thought this would be a great seasoning to add on this fish. I'm also gonna go in with a little bit of blackened seasoning as well too, which, oh my goodness, if you guys have not tried the seasoning, you need to because it just takes anything you're cooking to the next level. I'm also going to be using some Himalayan sea salt as well too. And for that you guys, that's it. That's all the seasoning that I'm going to be using because with fish, 
you don't really need to season it so much. It just needs a little bit of seasoning just to go a long way. And especially with these seasonings that I'm using right now is all that you're going to need. The only thing that we're going to do now is pretty much top this off with our lemon slices. So now I'm gonna go ahead and grab a little bit of oil just to give it that oil consistency on top because when you grill it, you want to use the oil. Reasons being, so it does not stick to the grill. And let's go ahead and finish this off with a little bit of lemon slices in between as well too. And I almost forgot, I am gonna be adding one more extra thing, but you're gonna see that in just a moment. So I'm gonna be adding some fresh thyme also in this fish because it's going to give it that flavor that is just going to be delicious. And all I'm going to do now is just turn it over and do the exact same thing that I did already when it was on the other side. And now since I've added the last touches, look at that seasoning, you guys. Now let's take it off to the grill. That's right. I've already started that fire and got it ready. And I'm about to clean my grill really quick just so that delicious fish can be on this grill. Mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. Take a look at this. Take a look at this, please. Looks so beautiful. So seasoned. Well seasoned, might I add. And now I'm just gonna go ahead and place this on the grill. And what you wanna do is you want to basically grill this and also be mindful of this too, because fish does tend to stick. But if you do oil it, good enough then it will not stick it will release from the grill okay that is a quick tip for you and all you have to do is just let this fish grill and let it do its thing Now that a few minutes has passed, I'm gonna go ahead and pop my asparagus on there. I have a grill mat. If you guys want to know where I got this grill mat, I actually got it from Walmart in the grill section. Definitely convenient, does help tremendously, so it stops anything from pretty much falling down. So I'm just gonna leave my asparagus on this grill mat why I grill my fish and also grill my asparagus all at the same time. Doesn't that sound so good? Yes, it does. But you gotta keep watching. So while everything is being taken care of on the grill, I'm gonna go ahead and make me some homemade mashed potatoes. And how I do that is I start off peeling my potatoes. Now I'm just using regular russet potatoes you can use whatever potatoes you like and i'm just going to cut these down to size now the reasons why i'm cutting them down to size is because it makes it very easy for you to mash them after you boil them instead of having to mash a larger potato so as you can see i've cut them down to size i'm putting them in some boiling water or just some water I allow this to boil until my potatoes are completely soft because we're making homemade mashed potatoes, y'all. I'm trying to tell you, follow that recipe and you will never buy any mashed potatoes again. Now, you guys can see right now, look, 
it started storming, so I couldn't completely show you the fish, me flipping it, because it just started pouring right on my head. Isn't that funny? But let's go ahead and finish off these mashed potatoes then. So they're completely soft and ready to be mashed. So I'm gonna go ahead and drain this water really quick. And after you drain the water, this is how it's going to look. I'm just gonna take just something to quickly mash them together. And of course, sometimes I like mine's a little chunky, but in this video, I'm gonna make them really smooth. So I'm gonna add some butter to this. I'm also gonna be adding a little bit of, you just gotta keep watching. So here I'm gonna be adding some heavy whipping cream. This gives it the creamy texture, you guys. Very creamy. And I'm just gonna dab on just a little bit. And now I'm gonna add some Himalayan pink sea salt. And now I'm gonna go in with some black pepper as well. And I'm gonna give this a quick stir, but before I do, I'm gonna add some chives to this as well. Can't go wrong with adding chives. Just makes the mashed potatoes delicious. And there you have it, you guys homemade mashed potatoes. Simple, quick, and easy. And on that note, I went ahead and I grabbed the asparagus as well too that was sitting out there on the grill. So here's a quick sneak peek of it before I plate it. And as you can see, it's nicely grilled, seasoned to perfection. So with that, you guys, make sure you like, share, subscribe, also, let me know if there's anything else that you would like to see. On that note, stay strong, stay healthy, stay in the spirit. And with that, I will see you in the next video. I'm out.